So you remember from before that PCL5, we did that Lewis diagram. Well, listen, that can exceed the octet rule. And when you have a central atom that can, and here's that Lewis diagram that we had before. Oh man, so we got one, two, three, four, five, five effective pairs around the central atom. And when you have that, here's the shape. You've got one in the middle and five on the outside. But where are the five arranged? Here's how it goes. You put three of the bonds in the plane, one sticking out of the top and one out of the bottom, which actually minimizes the repulsions here for at least three of the possible five by putting them 120 degrees or away from each other. These guys right here and these guys right here. These guys are 90 degrees away from three, but they are at least 180 degrees away from each other, right? Well, that's the maximal amount of, of, of separation that you can form here in this molecule. So what's that called? Kind of weird name. It's trigonal because look, there's a plane here that's got a plane here that's got three in it, so that's trigonal. Now, if you actually slap the, the, the plywood here, one, two, three sides there, and one, two, three sides there, you'd actually get um, two pyramids, right? Two three-sided pyramids. So it's actually got it's a trigonal with two pyramids, one under underneath and one on top. So it's called trigonal or trigonal bipyramidal, and that is the shape of this PCL5, and that's the net arrangement here. So again, if you're going to draw that, by the way, what you do is you just put, well, that one's going, these three could stay there in the, in the, uh, these three could stay with single bonds here. You could put this one sticking out, so put one of these heavy ones here, right? And then this one is a dotted line here. So you would get rid of all the lone pairs here, when you draw the shape on paper and then, now listen, by the way, if you can actually draw these shapes and you're a really good artiste, well go ahead and do that, your teacher will love it. But if you need, if you're like me and you, and you draw, st I can't draw things, I, I draw stick people, stick houses, stick circles, I'm terrible at drawing. But here's the thing, what you do is that one's coming out at you in the picture and that one's going in the back and these three are just off to the side here and that's the way that you can uh, uh, draw that, right? And that, again, that is called trigonal bipyramidal. But there are shapes that come off of this. So now, watch this. If I actually have a molecule, which I can, called PCL4 with a negative one charge, PCL4 with a negative one charge can actually be drawn, and by the way, when you count it up, four times group seven is 28, plus five is 33, and one more is 34. When you do the Lewis diagram for that, that's just this. It's taking off that CL and putting a lone pair there. And that would be the Lewis diagram in all single bonds. With brackets around it, of course, and the negative one charge. But what would that look like as a shape? Well, here's the thing. It's still got, as its arrangement, one, two, three, four, five effective pairs because that lone pair that's there is an effective pair. And why did I put it in there? Because here's the rule. If you do a diagram that's going to have five effective pairs around it, you make sure that if you've got a lone pair, or any lone pairs, they go in the plane. The plane, boss. The plane. They go in the plane. So you see this molecule right here, which was the PCL5? I need to put the lone pair here in the plane. The plane, boss. The plane. It always goes in the plane, not up top and not down below. Because that way, that lone pair is... 120 degrees away from at least two things here and that's maximal because if the lone pair was in the top it would be 90 degrees away from three things and lone pairs like more space right so they don't want to be 90 degrees away from things when they can actually be 120 degrees away from things right what's the name of that shape because that is still a tetra trigonal bipyramidal arrangement okay watch this That's a teeter-totter, isn't it? And that shape is actually called, I'm not kidding you when I say this, this shape right here is called seesaw. Seesaw for teeter-totter because that's, the form, that's what it does. So when you have five effective pairs but you've got a lone pair in the plane, that's a seesaw. <laughs> okay. Now, what happens if you have a molecule like this? 
This is CLBR3. That's not an I, that's an L. CLBR3. What you would do is, you would actually, to draw the Lewis diagram, you would draw essentially what is going to be, uh, sorry, CL. It's going to be BR here, BR here, BR here. And by the way, when you put the lone pairs around everything, what you're going to get, you're supposed to have group 7 times 4, which is 28. Now, what's that going to equal right there? That's going to be 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Because remember, when you need to exceed, when you need to uh, exceed the octet rule, give the central atom the extra lone pairs too, what does that mean for this chlorine? One, two, three, four, five effective pairs. That's trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. But where do you put these two lone pairs? In the plane, boss, the plane. So there's one lone pair. And there's the other lone pair, but they're not in the shape. So what are you left with? T-shape. And that's the name of it. So this would actually be called, how would you draw that? You just draw it flat, right? There's a CL, there's a BR, 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 and there you go, peoples. That's going to be the shape called T-shape, because there's the T, right? And then, remember that one that we did before is a Lewis diagram? It was... I3 negative. And I3 negative, when we drew that before, pardon me, I3 negative looked like this. Remember? The eyes here, the eyes here, the eyes here. And we had the two lone pairs here and here. And then we finished off with this. And that's going to actually be 22 uh, valence electrons accounted for. One, two, three, four, five effective pairs. Five effective pairs, trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. And where do you put those three lone pairs in that arrangement? In the plane, boss, the plane. And so now all of a sudden you take that shape and you take that T shape and then you just, no, 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 you got to put, there's a lone pair in the plane, lone pair in the plane, and now another lone pair in the plane. Well, what are you left with? Three lone, three lone pairs in the plane, one iodine in the middle, and these two are going to be like just like that color there. What are you going to get as a shape? You're going to get a linear. So, what are the names of the shapes for five effective pairs? You can have trigonal bipyramidal when you have five atoms around the center. If you have four around the center with that arrangement, you got seesaw. Three, you got T-shape. Two around the central one, and you got something that goes linear. And now there's one more arrangement to consider.